eventually. High Priestess, Empress, Emperor. I particularly chose this deck because I absolutely love how colorful and vivid the cards are. Yeah, absolutely. These are gorgeous. I have heard about borders and how some people do not like them. I noticed with this one here, the borders are faded or transitional. And it's a nice black border. Doesn't look harsh. The Hanging Man. Oh, Definitely more beautiful. colorful, more vibrant. Definitely not a, a dark card in some ways. He's beautiful. Yeah. But to make up for it, death. Death was absolutely Oh, honest. you know, there are some people <laughs> there are some people who who look at only the death card and that's how they decide whether or not they're gonna buy a tarot deck. <laughs> the so, tower is another one that I really enjoy. The buildings, the very futuristic pillars with oh, yeah, great really, tragedy it's coming really down. Steam upon Very steampunk. A lot of femininity in the cards as well. Very smooth, very That's graceful. Right yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And finally, oh. the world. And the world is actually made of the constellations, which I think is quite lovely. Oh, yeah. It's got all the zodiac in it. Gorgeous. Very cool. Very cool deck of cards. And we have wands. I'm just going to pull the first of each one. How do you feel? Well, um, you should actually find number five of each one, because that's the five? one we care about today. Cool. Six. Six. Oh, sorry, six, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're still off by a week. I know. <laughs> you're catching up. Still, I'm still way behind. So fact, four, six. I go look at my fives, because I haven't actually seen them. Here is the six. Did well, you, does anybody have a copy of the five homer from last week? Um, or last month? Yep. Hang on. There we go. I'm just going to switch our camera out, so we can probably pass this guy around. There you go. Um, and it is not pentacles, it is coins in this deck. Yep, pentacles so and coins, coins being cups, interchangeable is a thing. So we're having our tarot group. Um, this is a live stream. They interestingly haven't put the names on the cards. Yeah, if you want. This is Dan Tapper, he's going to be helping us. <laughs> there you go. How many people do you have? What do you mean? Oh, how many people? Like on your, on your live stream. Um, I think, probably I think not. You're right that in the writer way. Oh, apparently I can't yeah, sign my phone. Name. No, please but don't. Maybe yeah. Okay. Does you have names on on like base cards? No, it's just four cards. So. Yeah, it's actually pretty rare. I think. So maybe yes. it's my deck that's unusual. Yes. Or not. Yes. I like the shiny deck. I know it's my favorite. <laughs> I think. Who's or, this well, though? The Eridescent is getting there. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, there's the there's the homework you missed. So thank you. This is my first deck. Uh, have you got to enjoy the, the, the vividness of it too. Okay. And me, please. I know we were <laughs> you all, lose we were all tardy. All the time. We were all losers who weren't here. Okay, well, I'm going to have to print it out. <laughs> oh, well. no, no rush. We can do that. No. I mean, fine. Do well, if I don't print it now, then I'm going to forget. And this will give me have? an excuse. Oh my god, you just forced the, me all the way out the, of your... The, the Empress is full of life. You're out of the life stream now. Well, no, I'm, it, I don't care about that, but I have to move everything I own. <laughs> Can I see the um, the box? Yeah. It's so shiny. It is. So spectacular and beautiful. It is. Yes, I can't get over how I beautiful the these cards. Out. <laughs> the lovers... The lovers are more completely sold cool off, though, I guess. Yes. You want to see the his yeah. six of well, swords? You want to the show them? Amazing. You want to show the, the, kids? the live stream? Yeah. So this one I'm yeah. not as cool about. This is the lovers. You don't like the picture? Um, I, it's all right. To to me, the feathers. It's basically like feathers going down around their hair. It does it, look like feathers. They look like like birds without the bodies. I, I can clearly see they were going for a heart, but the irony is, it's technically a broken heart. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Also bizarrely with the snake too, like. Oh, that's what love well, is. Well, hey, Adam and Eve, the first yeah, yeah, lovers. Yeah. I suppose well, they got the Adam. They got yeah. the apple in there too. Oh, yeah. Temptation. <laughs> don't. don't. That get is involved. what it is. It's, it's but, a very beautiful card. But they are very much separated in that one. Yes. 
have you are you doing readings for people yet or are you just sort of studying the cards? Me, me, the, I, I literally cracked yeah, my first we, deck. Usually really? we break at the end and <laughs> yeah. do readings. Yeah. Oh, but, cool. but the the live stream we just do the Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, learning. I um I don't have my tarot cards with me here. I I got a um a Crowley Thoth deck when I was in England. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, I oh, love cool. that deck. Yeah, it's that so one's much awesome. more complex. Well, it's I bought so it. For, I bought it at a, a, a jumble sale for a pound. Oh, nice. And then I I sold it in the end for fifty pounds just because I saw that it was worth more online. That's oh, so amazing. I was like, I'm gonna sell That's it. Crazy. But I wish now I kept it because I, I really like it. Temperance is kind of cool. We have an angel there, kind of hovering in the air. You see the fire and power rising up, but the water also dropping down. Both in balance, one to the other. This one kind of looks like Iron Man, which is <laughs> the Fool. Yeah. So yeah. The, the Fool is interesting because it actually has the cards within it. Very uh, rarely do I see a card that references other very, cards so directly. That's actually very beautiful. Okay, what do you, which, which ones do you losers that didn't come to the actual meetings want? I just need a fifth. <laughs> How many do you want? Just the fifth. <laughs> yeah, they just want five. I think Hari's missing five. most of them. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you need? Because I've been having Wednesdays. In my I know. I was mainly oh, yeah. directing it to <laughs> these guys. No, she, 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 she's giving me shit because not only am I not showing up, I haven't been bringing my camera lately. No, it's not <laughs> that. You take the you take the cheat sheets and then go off and lose them. So you how, wipe your butt with they, them. They, they are so. <laughs> How does this meetup work? Do you like have no, you been compiling a deck or have you did you start off with decks? Like how how's no, no, it? We, we so all have our me, full decks yeah. already. Most of okay. us have well, many in no. fact. Yeah. Well, but we just have been slowly working through the cards, learning like if you look at the Oh okay, thing like here, the meaning of each one. Yeah. Yes. The meaning of each one and then overall there's also like, you know, every every number has its own like numerology. Okay. And that relates to the meanings of the cards sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And then plus of course the major arcana has a whole story that that we go through. Mm -hmm. The the moon is actually quite lovely because it actually has the Egyptian symbology into it. Okay. Which is quite gorgeous. And maybe I don't know. Out of all the cards, Um, I'm not really seeing anything else heavily focused toward Egyptian. (laughs) So it's kind of unique in that regards. Yeah, it's not gonna come. It'd be interesting to to have a um a deck designer come and come and speak or talk to a deck designer and that see, and see cool. how they a lot of go about in, decks, interpreting. A lot of indie decks that are out there. Indie so, I think at, at the Hermit's we Lamp. We should make a hack lab. Yeah, yeah, we should. We should. Wouldn't that be an awesome yeah. deck? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty damn cool. Whoa. And we could have the laser cutter in the bathroom as like the fool. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so much potential. So much option for destruction. Yeah, yeah I agree. In the end, it'll cause some giant flame one oh and we'll have like God. a... You know, Whoa. split of do, do, do we actually need to have fires coming out of the laser cutter with me? No, <laughs> not yet. Maybe. But that does remind mm. me there definitely needs to be a fire extinguisher Thank card. You, By yes. the laser cutter. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, I'm going to clean up some of these. There also needs to be an atomic chili card. Get back to the core. Atomic <laughs> chili. <laughs> what would that be? Oh, it's just in homage to my classic atomic chili recipe of like four years ago now. Where oh. Well, we somehow or other. Is anybody commenting on the Facebook stream? You don't have to point the camera. Spice at me, with but. Oh, I thought it sorry. Chili powder. No one's coming. It turns out to have no, been powdered that. chilies. Sorry. And so That's I put okay. four yeah. tablespoons of powdered chilies <laughs> into the chili. Oh, oh no. Goodness. Um, so oh, goodness. Awesome. <laughs> that can be a gem in the holograms outrageous card. <laughs> oh, there can be. There, oh. there needs to be an axis of evil's card. Yeah, that's oh. true. Axis of evil cookies card. <laughs> Alex's dog. Alex's dog, yeah, yes, I agree. The Doge card. The Doge card. <laughs> Clearly, he would be with the fool. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Can Alex be the fool? No, we can have so many fools. There needs to be like seven fools. Or you know what? Maybe the Hack Lab deck is just everyone's the fool. Every maybe, <laughs> maybe Rotten Bananas should There's be the fool. There's 78 fool cards. <laughs> I think Rotten Bananas should be the fool card. And Rotten Bananas is the fool card. Uh, yeah. I think Why? Rotten Bananas is going to be taking over the world. I hope very so. Yes. Electricity, yeah. I, it's I there. I think this deck, I feel it's very, uh, I think that Eric would really work well with this deck. Yeah, for there's not a lot of it. science. Yeah. I agree, there's not a lot of science. It's only the occasional card that's sciencey or steampunky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As opposed to my deck, of course, where they're all oh, like, yeah. Because then there's also like the hermit that's like pure magic and crystals. The nematode card. You drew the ace of nematodes. He's so, like, tired looking. 
What I like I like the, the design on the yeah. on the sheet. Because he's wisdom. tired of your bull crap. That's why he <laughs> went. <laughs> that's why he went to live up an out, a, a mountain. I like be the, away um, from this garbage. Those, those, just has like those ones are good. Just, oh yeah, these ones. They like just flying. Right? Yeah, yeah these, these are the traditional cool. ones, and my oh, iridescent my iridescent ones are based on that. And I. That was a um. Oh, there they are. That was a pro like an yeah my iridescent ones are the same. OpenGL program. Oh cool. Yeah, yeah, that was a GL tarot deck. The other thing is, so you'd like GL. draw it and it would have like tarot but also like open GL code. There needs to be a Bitcoin card in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's probably like a whole yes. like blockchain tarot that they could be. Oh my god, but, somebody needs to make but that. Okay second. guys, can we get <laughs> on topic? Would that what be cool? The tarot VR cards? There's a huge market. Can we you could have a tarot VR game. Okay, yeah, cool, maybe. guys. Hi. Okay, we get on top. With <laughs> animated, like, animated characters who um, tell yeah, you. Yeah, but people, I'm, I'm, I'm want to learn these. I, I so, like if we want to hang out and just hang I, out and I, talk. I, I we I guess. talk. We can shoot this shit about yeah, yeah anytime. Can like, I just say one idea about a tarot? No, can we just have our <laughs> yeah. meeting? Uh, that would be just, nice. Just one, one, one tiny. Just one tiny. Nope. Nope. Definitely. You can see later. Okay. That's the way. He needs to be introduced. You didn't introduce him yet. Yes. I did. Oh, did you? Yes. I did you some on the Facebook. Okay, so this is Dan Tapper. Hi, tarot people. He doesn't do tarot. So, <laughs> but he used to have but, but a also, card deck. He have yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sold. No, he sold his tarot deck for money. For money. That's like the worst thing you can do to develop a relationship with your deck. Is like sell it. It's gonna. It has really bad like really bad vibes. Parent issues. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, can we have a tarot meeting, please? Yes. Yep. All right. Walk on. Okay, so this uh, this meeting is about the sixes. And uh, the number six is represented by the cube, the hexagon, and hexagram, which are important in sacred geometry. And there's a perfected sense of, oh, wow. <laughs> not only do I not show up, I do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to accent here now. Exit stage left. <laughs> Joseph is leaving. <laughs> He'll be back. Maybe I can narrate it for the, the yeah, people yeah. who have Yeah, we are. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry if I frustrated you, Sonia. That's okay. I put a lot of work into this. And I actually am really interested to learn. I'm sorry I'm a chatty person. Are you? Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Sixes. Okay, so there is a perfected sense of balance contained within the number six. It symbolizes the responsibility and service of mothers and the work that they do building and working through love, nurturing and prote protection. Uh, six strives for harmony, justice, peace, and truth. Six is represented by the planets v Venus and its higher octave of Uranus. Uh, Pythagoreans recognize six as the first perfect number. Uh, because in mathematics, a perfect number is when all the numbers, divisors, including the number itself, are added. The sum equals the number itself. Uh, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. Perfect numbers are rare, and Greeks identified only 4. You can Google which ones they are. Um, I only had so much page space. <laughs> um, but in the years since uh, we've discovered more, it's the highest number on dice, and so it represents luck. Braille uh, is made of arrangements of six dots. I didn't actually know that until today. Um, each you know, letter or pictogram in Braille is, uh, is an arrangement of six dots, dots. God took six days to create everything, and Jesus turned six, six jars of water into wine. And um, Joseph has returned yeah, to the meeting. <laughs> Um, and actually, an interesting, um, interesting tidbit that has to do with uh, six is that at the very north pole of Saturn, there is a hexagon, mm -hmm. and That's no really one cool. knows yeah. what the hell it's, it's really there cool. for or why, but there it is. So um, six is representative of responsibility, service, nurture, concern for others, mothering, and the symbol of the mother, um, because. I think it's um, the six is like the uh, the Holy Trinity stacked on top of itself. So you have the mother, father, child, and then higher octave of mother, fire, father, child. Hmm. Um, 
uh, determination, sometimes bordering on obstinacy and un unyielding nature. Um, seeing, because they've got, that we have a, some people have a sixth sense. Uh, connecting to inner guides and guidance. Um, a gateway to clairvoyance, ESP, gut instinct. Uh, it also has to do with J dreams, imagination, and visualization. Unlocking infinite possibility and creating your own reality. Truth, union, lovers, harmony, balance, equality, integration, dependability, indecision, and, and it can be in, in, uh, represented indecision uh, requiring a choice. And uh, just in case, I'm going to check out our Twitter. You don't have to put your hand. Up. I have a question. <laughs> is being is being born on the sixth a powerful? Is that powerful? In um, any way? Yes. Are you making that up or is it true? No, being born at all is powerful. What yeah. about like the sixteenth? That's a seven. Yeah, in numerology, one plus six is seven. Okay. So, so in numerology, you add all the numbers okay. together until you come up with, like, uh, of your birthday. So you add each number in the birth year, month, and day. Mm -hmm. And then you come up with, you add, you, you add it all together and then add all the numbers together until you've reduced it down to one number alone. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, every number is powerful. It's just representative of different things. So the six is just powerful, but representing all of those things. So, so I if just... you're like born in 1991, it would be zero, it'd be zero, zero. So it'd just be 20. zero because it's, oh, it'd be 20. So you nine, can go... nine is 18 plus one is 19 plus one is 20. I thought it has to be just a, a single digit number. Well, you, if you listen, I'll explain it. Okay. So one, nine and nine is 18 plus one is 19 plus 1 is 20. Yeah. 2 plus 0 is 2. Okay. So you distill it down. You just add all, add each in, uh, number together okay. until you distill it. Okay, so that would be 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 16 is... Uh, so now it's... Would be, would be 1 then, because then it would be 10. So, so that's your zero. life path number. 1 or, yes. or 10. Yep. Yeah. But 10. it would distill down to one. Okay. Yeah. And you can Google what it means. Because okay. you missed yeah. that meeting. Yeah. I need wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. No. No, it's cool. It's interesting. Cool. So, um, yeah, we'll start with the wands. And so, on the traditional rider weight, it's a... Ah, oh, man, that looks so cool. Um, <laughs> on the traditional ride away, it is a, um, a person returning, like a victorious dude on a horse, returning to his homies and having a celebration. Here, pass me that. I'll do it. That's all good. You can get this. So there he is. He's returning with his homies. He's chilling. He's victorious. And we can go down the line and see what everybody else has for theirs. We actually have on this one here, we have the horse once again, streamers riding behind the rider. We see the horns, very powerful, majestic riding along. And once again, very much in celebration, very light and bright. Very similar imagery. Here, yep. your card, Absolutely. or do you want to show it to the... Go yeah, ahead. show it over there too. <laughs> there in the science deck, the six of... Uh, Bunsen burners, which is Ooh, nice. wands, is is but equilibrium. Bunsen burners are not fire. Bunsen burners are fire, which yeah. is why it's wands. Wands are fire. Yeah, oh, yes. wands are fire. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and uh, and that has to do with our elements page, which is in with the cheat sheet. Which I remember clearly. Of yeah, yeah, clearly from not, long ago. Did, I know. That's yeah. the one that you did not take home. And your and the equilibrium card, according to the manual, is, is about the like delicate balance between opposing forces. And it talks about taking a break. But then the card itself is covered in all kinds of other illustrations. There's like some kind of weird constellation of a ram. There's these like... That's Aries, which is a fire sign. Uh, is it? Okay. And then there's all these like grids of molecules and things. Like there's diagrams of like... Um, Ooh, is that like some explosive kind of chemical? Like I have gas or... I have no <laughs> idea. You want it? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Don't forget you're holding the phone videotaping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that, I think we could just, uh, Facebook got an amazing view of your wrist. <laughs> so yeah, so this has the 
Um, this is really interesting. It's so equilibrium and it's, oh my gosh, and, oh, this is so cool. This is really awesome. So this, this card is highly symbolic of Aries. Um, if you notice, there's the, where did he go? Uh, there's the ram up here. And it looks like these are, these might even be these little um, light streaks almost look like wands. And then the sun, the rim of the core of the sun itself has the Aries astrological symbol in it. And there's also a chemical sim symbol down here, which is kind of interesting. So this is, oh God, I love this science deck. This is so neat. Yeah, these, the, the, they're chemical bonds. Oh, you know, okay, you know what these are? These are hexagons. These are hexagons, oh, hexagons that are, that are uh, forming chemical bonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're making like benzene ring kind of things. Yes, they're yeah. making Bentium Ren things. <laughs> no. Bentium Rings is my favorite band. <laughs> that is our new band. I'm just curious, I'm is that... Okay, here, here, you want to do yours, Pari? Is this the sure. Hi. Um, I have the uh, Shadowscape tarot deck, and uh, this is the, um, the Six of Wands. And uh, this is the, it's like a, a symbol of kings or emperors and he's proclaiming his ascendancy with a triumphant declaration. So even the, the stone lion is bowing his head and just, you know, lying there in submission and, and so he's, um, yeah, so, you know. So yours is symbolizing the victory and the triumph yeah. as opposed to mine, which is more the balance. And <clears throat> Here, can I, can I pass it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And we'll We'll show it to the YouTubers. Yeah. Sure. Wow. Yeah. This is gorgeous. And it looks like he's standing on a ram. On oh, no no on a lion. Oh, it's a stone, lion. Stone lion. Wow. Oh, this is the shadowscape tarot. Yeah. Shadow yeah. Tarot. I really like the silver I, I, border. I could have been quite happy with that. The silver border is really gorgeous. There we go. Treja. All right. So, um, the oh wait, and I have. There we go. And then Santa Muerte Tarot is the, it, it looks again like it looks like a procession. It, it looks maybe like even it, it's a parade. Um, it's a bunch of skeletons, so it's kind of hard to tell what they're, what they're feeling, especially by their faces. So that's a little bit difficult. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, excuse me. So the wands um, signify good news, uh, victory, a triumph, achievement, um, success through hard work, um, but humility is needed. Like, excuse me, um, because it's a card of triumph and like, um, you know, overcoming and a lot of um, success, it, um, there's, a, there's a warning that comes along with it about um, not getting too big of a head about it you, you need to be more you need to be humble as well as um uh you know celebrating your victory and if uh if you have if you guys have a a tarot card i'd love to see it if there's you know for the people tuning in or whatever just uh show us your tarot cards you can tweet them to um uh, our twitter account um or you could i don't know if you can show them um I don't even know if you could you could show them in a message. Um, it also uh, indicates. Um, it's so surreal. What is? His deck. His deck. I know it's so cool. Very surreal. It, it yeah. fit me beautifully. It's so surreal. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Isn't that great when you find the tarot card it, that you're? There's a few months. Something was down to earth as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, wands also indicate self-confidence gained through past accomplishments, uh, promotion, validation, and confirmation of goals achieved. So, you know, you're, you, you know, you, you're doing your thing, you're doing your work, you've put yourself out there, and then, um, you know, the, the, the six of wands indicates that you're finally getting recognition for the, the good things that you're doing. I wonder if set it up I know remember last time we did this we set it up on a bowl of popcorn I know and then it fell right over anything it should be there
What about just a pack of cards lodged up against it? Uh, yeah. Well, how about this? This big. It was. Oh, cool. And it's my back. Ah, this is this live stream is going great today. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So we've got two different angles. I just moved this one. All right, cool. So um, back to the lecture at hand. Okay, swords is the next card we're going to look at. And this card has a has a pretty depressing vibe about it, I have to admit. It's um, a boatman uh, carrying a woman and child, well, presumably a woman and child, um, and their cargo of swords uh, away into the distance. And um, it looks like actually something I just noticed on it. If uh, and you guys can you guys can follow along on the rider weight because it's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, if you look on the bottom. If you look on the bottom, uh, what is that? The bottom right-hand side of the card, you can see that there's stormy Water. waters on the one side, and what they're heading towards is smoother waters. So it's a bit of a depressing vibe, but it also kind of indicates the journey to something better. Um, it's uh, it's an assurance that better times lay ahead, and that the way out is on its way. Um, and the way out is on the horizon. Um, it's a passage away from difficulties. Um, a mourning, because I don't know uh, about you guys, but I've been in abusive relationships before. And uh, one of which was with like a boss. And it wasn't like a sexy time abusive relationship, but it was, my boss was abusive. And, um, and I remember I woke up in the morning and I was determined to get a different career job and I had been like hounding this dispatcher for months and he said you know what you, the only way you're gonna get to this you're only the only way you're gonna get to work for us is if you ride your bike to Keel and Steels yeah did you see Pari's face Keel and Steels so I uh, <laughs> this one morning like I think the the one day he screamed at me on speakerphone wow. and while I was in line at a coffee shop. And I was like, you know what? I don't need this bullshit. So the next day, he, um, the next day, instead of going to work, I just rode my bike to Keel and Steels. And I was like, screw it. Um, and I remember that night, I visited my friend. I just went across Steels. Steels is pretty far. It's probably an hour-long bike ride. Um, and the boss did that to make sure he was only getting dedicated riders who were any good. And so I just rode across the top of the city and visited a friend of mine. And then a storm came in and we went tobogganing and stuff. And the whole night I just thought, you know, from time to time I'd be like, you know what? I don't have a job right now. <laughs> I just went to see his new dispatcher and get a new job. And I was like, I don't have a job. I'm unemployed, but it really felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Like I didn't know where my money was going to come from. I didn't know whether I was going to get this job or not. Um, but it didn't matter because I wasn't going to be screamed at in the middle of a coffee shop anymore. And that's kind of what this card represents. Like just, you may not know where you're going, but it's better than what you've been dealing with. So, um, good times are coming. They're not here yet, but don't hold up or don't, don't give up hope. And let's see your card. So for myself, we're basically looking at a woman traveling along. She's on the prow of the ship looking ahead. She's has, if not optimism, it's a form of determination, looking very okay. strongly forward. What do we got? Over we here? have, six swords, three above, three below. And while they might be dangers upon the way through that journey, it looks like she's navigating them confidently. So there is a passage moving ahead, finding the next place of the journey. Um, I just want to say, ah, whoops. There goes our live feed, sorry. I just want to say hi to Kitty Lee McKenzie. She just tuned in. Dan right. Tapper right, is Kitty Lee McKenzie. <laughs> Dan Tapper is giving you a karate chop. <laughs> or a wave. Or a wave or something. <laughs> or a wave. 
No, it's not. You're Hi crazy. Hey, um, so if you want, uh, I'm off, I'm off to the side over here on our YouTube, but, uh, if you want, um, tweet us a picture of one of your, your favorite six card. We just got through the, uh, wands and we're, we're in the yet. middle of the swords. Yeah, swords. yeah, we're in the middle of the swords and it's great to have you. Please share freely. And we're on to the science deck. What does the science deck look like for our cards here? Science deck. Here, you can. Can I do it? Yeah. It, it has actually very similar to the Rider Waite in terms of its graphics. It's called the Quantum C. Ooh. And it has an extremely similar interpretation as well. Basically, the idea is in the early 20th century, they were doing all these weird experiments with subatomic particles. And the results were just like totally fucked up. And everyone was completely confused. And then, probably very frustrating. Yeah, it was extremely frustrating. And then several scientists, including Richard Feynman, devised things like is pictured on the back of the boat. This is a Feynman diagram. That, and, they, and they have a theory called quantum electrodynamics, which basically successfully predicts the totally weird results of quantum experiments. Can I see it? And Can so it provides, it, it provides like the guide through. And that picture oh. has a similar sort of like behind you, you can see the choppy water. And ahead, yeah. you can see that it's smoother. Yeah, and um, just for anybody interested in science, um, the, uh, the hacklab.to, which is where we're broadcasting from, uh, hosts a lecture series or a discussion series on the, on the Feynman lectures and the things that he was talking about with quantum physics. Yep. So yeah, if so you were interested, hacklab.to. So, yeah, so wanna... overall I feel like that card is very similar to the Rider Waite. Very mm -hmm. similar. Yeah, yeah, the theme, the, the I think theme the themes in all of them are, yeah. are very, uh, very strong. Can I take a look? Well, and even the picture. Hello, this is Fari, uh, yeah. and uh, I have the uh, Shadowscapes Terra deck. And this is what my uh, Six of Swords looks like. And here you can see a, a beautiful child kind of snuggled up to this swan, which is uh, flying away. And uh, you see these um, six swords that have been planted on the ground or whatever you don't see the bottom part but yeah yeah and and uh, and then you have these ravens these ravens which are you know very wise uh, birds that represent uh, wisdom and uh, and transitioning and i think they also represent ancestors that's right so so yeah, it's a beautiful, very comforting kind of a, a, a card, which I, I think is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just got these cards and I love them. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Can I show the um, yeah. Yeah. Are you just talking about your favorite six cards? Or? Um, so, no, well, we're no, going this is our, yeah. We're, we're, we're actually going through, through each so, like, one we're on of the, the We're on the six of swords right now oh, okay. on the cheat sheet. Cool. And we're just showing what each deck, because there's a different interpretation. Like all the interpretations are sort of in the same realm. But it's interesting to yeah. see how different decks Absolutely. do it in a different way, right? So, like, mm -hmm. Hari's card is definitely the most unique of the group. Like, for instance, the only one that has no bow. I yeah. guess the swan is sort of like the bow. The swan bow. Yeah. I mean, it certainly, it certainly has the same image of, like, it's taking you away. away. It, looks like, um, it looks like Christy Lee McKenzie really likes it, too. Yeah. Really she cool. loves like the that. picture with the swan. That's really cool. Oh, cool. Gabrielle just turned, tuned in. Really beautiful. Say hi to Gabrielle, guys. Hello. Hey. I think Kyle looks a bit like hi, a Gabrielle. Skull. Hi, Gabrielle. Or like an egret. Yeah. It looks really pretty. Yeah. I mean, it could be any of them, because none of those birds are obviously a, that big. It's a swan. It's a swan. It says it's a swan. Okay. okay. All right, swan it is. It's been determined. <laughs> oh, and... Um, if, you, if you ate it, the queen could arrest you. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and let's see. I have... Uh, I also have my Santa Muerte. I think this is the Six of Cups. Uh, uh. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the Santa Morte Six of Cups. And the thing with the Santa Morte deck that, I, uh, that I'm slowly learning is that it, um, oftentimes it has nothing to do with the rider weight. So it can be, it can be very difficult to interpret. Um, Book is in here somewhere. Huh, yeah, I can see why this is. So, 
I see yours. So I actually, for each of my cards... Oh, that's the Six of yeah. Cups. I no wonder. Four that's different six. interpretations. What? Like four, the, four different interpretations. There we go. This is the Six of so Swords. Six. That's why. One, two, oh, three. Oh, from go. different four people. Like that's their initials? Because... That's the Six of the people, Swords. The uh, I see. Cups. That's right. Yes. No, that's cool. Huh. And that's, that's the Six of Swords for the Santa Morte deck. And again, you can see the... The, uh, the boat driver on the river Styx, um, or whatever. I guess it's not the river Styx. I don't think... Hey, who knows? Maybe, because this is the Santa Muerte yeah, deck. This could very well deck. be... So they mentioned in mine also the river Styx is a reference. Yeah. Oh, and it does and it does show rough waters moving out what, to... What was his name? Fair... The, yeah, there was the a name for the yeah. boat driver yeah. for um, the river Styx. I can look it up, but I think it was... It began with an N. It was Doma Arigato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> no, yes. the tap. I'm just kidding. That was the band sticks. Um, so, um, it also represents a journey. Helos, maybe, or something. Um, a journey uh, could even be in consciousness, um, signifying that it's time to let go of failures, and you don't bring want to bring uh, a difficult past into the future. Um, you know, certain things, Sharon. it's just better to... Oh, Sharon. Yeah. yeah, there's a battle rapper in Toronto called that kid Sharon. He's pff, fucking devastating. He's really good. <laughs> He'll row you across the river. He will, seriously. To, to and death. he looked like an honest... Like, I think when he got started, he was like a teenager. And he just looked like this, you know, white teenager from the burbs. But the stuff... The, he would say the meanest stuff about you that rhymed is <laughs> unbelievable. Um... Cool. So yeah, it's um, indicating that it, um, you know, you're leaving. You're leaving tough times. Good, uh, better times are on the horizon, and you know, it's it's kind of best to leave those times behind, and, um, and and not take them into the future with you. Um, let's see what else do we got. Okay, so I guess on to cups. Cups, indeed. And this, this is the past life lover card. Um, and, and it, it actually does coincide a lot with the uh, Major Arcana, The Lovers. Um, on the card, you can see there's two, uh, two friends, two kids. One's kind of bigger, one's a little smaller, giving uh, gifts of flowers. And it tends to represent um, happiness coming from the past or nostalgia. Um, let's see. Here's the Santa Muerte one. Um, this is the one that this is the deck that always gets me because I don't know what they base their meanings on but it doesn't seem like it was um, it's definitely not the traditional rider weight it says the balance is precarious and the tendency to live in the past accumulating memories and nostalgia could bring us to accumulate its uncertainties to hide from the present oops to hide from the present um, and an inevitable solitude only through renewal and new acquisition of trust regarding the future can the situation be revised. And Gabrielle, Gabrielle wants to be added in. I don't know what that means, but we're going to do it. We're going to put it on. Cool. I don't know how Facebook works. I'm old. I'm old and weird. Oh, I think she's. Oh, cool. Hey, Hi. Look at my hair. Maybe that's, wait, hang on a sec, maybe I could, oops, um, I was going to add our other girl, Christy Lee McKenzie, I don't know how to do No, that. I think you can only add one person. You can, you can only do one at a time? That makes sense, otherwise yeah. you can tile your, I think, like, that would be so awesome though, windows. that would be so cool if we could though. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You've got quite the halo glare behind you, Gabrielle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's uh, it's literally that lamp right oh, there. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can see the lamp there. Oh, there's your bit. face. <laughs> cool. I love technology, guys. <laughs> so neat. So how's your how's your night going? Making um making oils for the metaphysical show this weekend. Oh oh. <laughs> yep. They're all packaged up. Very cool. Is there oil in that? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the this is the most tedious part because 
little trinket in Let's see if I can show you guys. Yeah, I think there's charms. You have charms for them, don't you? Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff, but right now I'm putting the lavender in this one. Ah. I have this one. Oh, check this yeah. out, guys. Okay, so the other bottles I have, there's What's that guy. That? What's in that? Oh, these are just empty right now. I have to fill them up. But this one's a blue one. This is going to be um, a protection one. Pentacle. This one. You see the two-tone color? It's mostly orange, but. <laughs> Facebook sees you too. Oh, wait. Let me get rid of my yeah, notification up there. Wow. Yeah. And then there's, there's this the one. commenting. Ain't much, but then there's our girl Gabrielle who's telling us about her oils and stuff. I know. <laughs> and then there's that one. Cool. So, what um, well, do you know? What what's the information about where you're going to be this weekend? Uh, uh okay. So we're at the Don Valley Hotel, uh, at. Eglinton and something. Don, or other. I think that's um, it's Eglinton and the Don Valley. I think it's right off the Don Valley Parkway, isn't it? Like Valhalla or something, Valhalla Drive or something. I know it's close to the Ontario Science Center. I take the one hundred from yeah, it's the Don, Don my Texas. area. <laughs> it's a little hard to hear you guys. The volume went down the minute I got signed in, so. That would be tell you, fix your computer. I'm on my phone it's right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I put. And she's fixed uh, it. <laughs> you totally glitched out. I broke. <laughs> oh, Chris. Ah, Crystaline. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't need to read it. You're in there. <laughs> cool. So let's uh, let's continue with some tarot, shall we? Cool. cool. Cards, 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 cards. So, um, yeah, this one is talking, the Santa Muerte one is talking about how balance is uh, precarious and you have to keep a balance um, in order to, um, to succeed in life and things. So let's pass her on down the line. So for the six of cups for here, we see them all gathered around. I kind of like this card because it's very natural. It, it, it's yeah. actually compared to all the other cards look very fantastical. Mm -hmm. This is someone remembering their life before, uh, kind of past memories of time simpler when they were just flying a kite. Yeah, and children. Uh, children is a theme of the Six of Cups, like remembering indeed. nostalgia for when you yep. were a kid. Absolutely. And it, it's something where it's also maybe a double-edged sword because of the fact you could also get lost in nostalgia, not choosing to move on. Mm -hmm. You can actually kind of get to a point where you're stuck in the past was better yeah exactly so while it's important to look back it's still important to keep in mind to look ahead yeah absolutely yeah. wonderful and and on that note actually i really love the science card too mm -hmm. it's it's called return to the sea gorgeous oh, and it, wow. it pictures um dolphins and whales oh, which me. which were once land species that's where they learned to breed <laughs> oh, yeah, because they must have yeah. been. Yeah, they learned, they learned to breathe. <clears throat> and then they returned to the sea as a kind of like, you know, in, in this interpretation, as a like nostalgic return to their past, except they didn't really return in the same way. Like they never became water breathing animals again. They are still mm -hmm. air breathing animals. So they've kind of taken like, you know, parts of their old world and made them parts of their new world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I guess in it's a, a sense, super cool. Maybe if, if something has been. I guess the way you can interpret that is that if something is going to benefit you in the future, then bring it with you. Like if it's something from your past that is going to help you in the future, then bring it with you. Oh, what? We got something. Gabrielle is holding up her. her tick. My six of your cups. Your six of what cups? Oh, wow. It's a lady in the water with the flowers on top. Yeah, and there's the six flowers right there. I love yeah, this it deck. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Chrissy Lee McKenzie uh, is loving the whales. 
And I think she likes she likes Joseph's card too. Oh, please forgive if my hand goes over. Hari, the, Hari's card is really amazing too. Um, hello, this is Pari, and uh, <laughs> 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 this is my Shadowscapes card, uh, and I I think it's absolutely stunning. And the Six of Cups is a reminder of childhood innocence, good intentions, noble impulses, simple joys and pleasures. It is not meant to be overly sentimental, but more an urging to remember the open-mindedness of a child's perspective mm. and to push back the narrowness that falls in on you over time with the complexities of life and responsibility. And, and you should describe the card. Oh, the card oh, yeah. is so beautiful. Oh, yeah. it, has, it has this like kind of fairy like scene of two kids having a tea party mm -hmm. with a bunch of like stuffed animals by yeah. a riverside that has cool fish. Yeah, and there's like, yeah, 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 there's like little fairies in the distance and all kinds of stuff going on. These beautiful cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's so pretty. I yeah. love that the, one. The koi fish all I gifted that deck to a friend of you mine. Are? The Shadowscapes, I gifted that deck nice. to a friend of mine. Oh, really? Awesome. Did, yeah. Did you hear I actually got my first deck? Yeah, Joseph did an <laughs> Oh, that's so exciting! Here's some of the cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He got the... Gateway to the Gateway Divine, to the divine tarot. tarot. Oh, wow! Good job. Yeah, there's the box. Yeah, he. Uh, that's so exciting! They're so pretty. I, I actually have my first two technically because my second one is pre-ordered. It's the holographic tarot, just the the major art. Oh, oh, you! Of course, yes, you would get oh, that. <laughs> so, uh, I I uh, spoiled Sonia earlier today. I showed her a picture of the Alice tarot. Mm -hmm. If you look on the actual website, Baba Studios, they only did a small run of, of yeah. the deck. So they were selling for $120 in Australia. Nice. And I'm getting a secondhand deck because the girl has two. Mm. She bought one and um, <laughs> she, she bought one deck. <laughs> And I it was gifted a deck as well, so she's gifting that. Um, and I think it's going to cost me around $200, wow. give or take. This is my holy grail of tarot yeah, no, deck. No. Oh. It, it has gold gilding around it, and then there's um, a select number of cards that have gold gilding in the image. Jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I just checked our Twitter and someone's like got all kinds of sexy time on my Twitter. I don't even know what that's about. I'm going to take that. Ooh. Somebody wow. reposted some stuff. Uh -huh. um, so how about uh, Christy Lee McKenzie? Um, do you, what, what deck are you working on? And if you want, um, you know, absolutely, you know, if you want, you can find us on Twitter and uh, tweet us a picture of the deck that you're working with. Um, I, I'm working with, uh, the cheapo Chinese, uh, iridescent tarot, tarot, which is kind of my favorite when it comes to the Rider Waite. Oh my gosh, Christy, 50 shades of tarot. <laughs> <laughs> they have that? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> she's, 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 got, she's got a bondage tarot. Um, I'm also working with the Santa Muerte. Dom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bondage, Dom, BDSM, it's all the same thing. A few rounds crossed. So the, I'm working with the uh, iridescent Rider Wake Smith and the um, the Santa Muerte Tarot. Uh, Joseph is obviously working with the Legacy of the Divine Tarot, which we unboxed today. And Eric is, Eric is working with the Science Tarot, uh, which is always a favorite around here Pari. because we're all nerdy and Pari, Pari's got the Shadowscapes tarot um, which has I think that came out more or less recently because I've been seeing a lot of it online like the kids really love that one um, 
that's becoming a huge popular yeah. deck yeah, it's, for sure it's up there with the um the wild unknown i feel like um it's like it's any it, yeah it, it, it entices people who haven't necessarily been into tarot before um because it's just so absolutely gorgeous um so where are we at oh cups um so just to finish off the cups um it's uh it can hey, happiness coming from the past a reuniting pleasant memories nostalgia joy childlike innocence and safety um it can indicate an admirer uh possibility of inheritance security um a, the a certain stage of development in a relationship so um you know whenever we're in a relationship no matter who it's with uh whenever we're in a relationship um you know there are levels right so this card can indicate um the development of uh, you know, like leveling up in your relationship. So, um, and it can also indicate easy relationships. You know, some you have to really, really, really work hard at, and some are just super easy. So this card um, indicates the easier ones where, you know, the kind of a no BS relationship. Y'all are just chilling. That's huh. the, kind of the minute you said that, when I looked at it or thought about this one, I was like, go with the flow. Yeah, exactly. And it's a, you know, cups. They always indicate go with the flow, right? Uh, Chrissy Lee McKenzie is still on her learner's permit. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, still uh, learning tarot and using, oh, she's on the learner's deck, uh, using animal tarot by, uh-oh, Doreen Virtue. Is that what you hate? She's a hot topic around here. <laughs> and Bradley Valentine. Uh, she was drawn to the deck because of her love for animals. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, like, that's part of the reason I called the night familiar is because, you know, animals are pretty awesome. And I think they all, a lot of them, you know, they always have uh, messages for us, right, in one way or another. Um, moving along, uh, next up is the uh, Six of Pentacles, which indicates um, generosity and success through giving. Oh, this is, like, shining in your eyeball. Um a fair balance between giving and receiving, stability and prosperity shared with others. Now, a couple of the um, interpretations that I was looking at um, yeah. focused on how um, the guy seems to be holding scales in his hand. Um, and, I mean, in one way it can be interpreted as he's, um, he is uh, giving uh, a just um, alms to the poor but it can also be interpreted as he is the judge and jury about which person deserves uh, charity and which doesn't. So that's kind of an interesting interpretation of that. Um, I'll quickly look at the, the pentacles in the Santa Muerte tarot. I wish, um, I wish there was a bigger book that came with the Santa Muerte tarot because I really don't understand what system of, divination they they were working from um because it it's it, it really has nothing at all uh to do with the rider weight smith and it's kind of an anomaly that way um and of course the book is like in the weirdest set up in the weirdest way okay so this is a really interesting looking card it's a uh it's, it's a grandfather clock. My mom used to have one of these, and it was like, man, I don't even, I didn't even notice how incredibly loud that clock was until I went back to my mother's house. Oh, my God. It's like the ticking is, def, is deafening, but I grew up with it, so I never noticed it at the time. So it says. Uh, That's in the Santa Morte? Yeah, the, that the grandfather. That, that one. Um, we are in the present, but in front of a precari precarious equilibrium, an alternation that swings like a pendulum between positive and negative. It could make our physical and economic situation unstable while waiting for a solution and an ulterior evolution. It will be time, fluid and unilateral, never stopping, that will make the situation evolve and enable us to overcome eventual obstacles. And I think from what I've seen so far, um, the Santa Muerte Tarot, uh, the sixes are about a, um, a very precarious balance, cause, uh, or at least those two cards are, because the, the cups as well, uh, we're talking about 
uh, an, a precarious balance. Um, yeah, so. The grandfather clock reminds me of the movie The Last Unicorn. Do you remember oh, that? Vaguely. I remember it about as well as my uncle who fell asleep when he took me to the movies. Uh, well, the main scene was like the um, the skeleton on t uh, sitting on top of the grandfather clock, and all he wanted was wine, which I thought was kind of neat. I don't know. It just kind of popped in my head. <laughs> so, Yay, Christy! I love that movie. <laughs> with this particular card, it's very similar in many ways. Uh, we do see the scales, which actually are formed by the hands of the people receiving the money. Uh, with this one here, though, the person holding three coins, it's weighed down heavier. So it's almost in one sense, the money is actually a weight. So it is something that we do receive more. We have more benefit, but there's also a weight to the actual having the money. Uh, in addition to it, That's really cool. I like the fact that the one that only has two coins is almost reaching out because the fact sometimes we do need to reach out, look for a little help from others, and often with the karma, it's balanced and restored. And that's the restoration that you see happening, almost a frozen moment in time here. <laughs> the, uh, the science tarot card is, is interestingly different this time. It says geothermal. And Ooh. it's a picture uh, of like basically a cross section of the earth showing the, the earth's molten core. And it's superimposed on an on a actually very famous image of the sun. That's an image from the Soho Observatory. I, rec I recognize it. Oh, I love and then, how you know that. that and then, real? yeah, it's a real image. And then the, um, the description says, the Earth's fiery core, always waiting deep beneath our feet, reminds us to consider what powerful energies may be found inside of us to echo the bright stars in our lives that have guided us until now. Hmm. Referencing the sun. like stability and generosity and prosperity shared with others. But I feel like it's, it's more primary interpretation is this like, you know, there are vast energies and powers just waiting for you mm -hmm. to tap into them. That's like, I feel the primary meaning of that card. There we go. Right. Here, you know what? <laughs> I'm mobile. Whoa. I'm mobile. This is what the uh, pentacles looks like in the uh, Shadowscape Terrace. Oh, wow. And so you, we see... Um, Look at her ride that pony. Sitting at the pinnacle upon the dragon's back, confident and self-assured. You know, he's made it in life and he's playing this kind of a flute. And uh, basically, it shows that it's in the pentacles in this part, in this deck, represents the cycle of dependence those who have and those who have not. And then we see that there's a sapling that's growing underneath, pushes through from the mud and the muck, and it's just growing because it's receiving all the, the generosity that's coming of this, you know, huh. this person who's playing this uh, flute. Oh, so that's the, like, really awesome looking plant at the bottom, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, so it just... Um, So the question is, who is truly the benefactor and who is the one who holds the power? I kind of love the mm -hmm. fact in that part, wealth is not just money, but it's mm -hmm. also the growth and the energy given, mm -hmm. helping to bring that growth to life. Because, I mean, isn't, isn't, like, isn't money a representation of time and energy? Like, all it is is, like, the, the numerical oh, wow. um, symbology <laughs> of our, our time and effort, you know what I mean? Sorry? And I'll say luck. What? And I'll say luck. Oh, I think you said you, and you like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we have corporate Dan on the other side. Not necessarily, but when it comes to, uh, oh, hi. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, like, um, our time and effort and labor, um, money is, like, a, uh, uh, a quantifiable unit of measurement for our effort, really. But also, like, I mentioned I from I my mean, card. Unless you work at a sweatshop. But it's still a quantifiable measure. <laughs> it is quantifiable. Yeah, yeah. 
just unfortunately it's a smaller quantity. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's the measureless sort of luck. Like, if you're born into a wealthy family, you attain that wealth. But anyway. In, in the six of cups. I like that but in the, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the slave economy, yeah. You How, know, like, hey, we're all wage slaves. And hey, we have just... a new person, Michael Hardy. Oh, yeah. Hi, Michael. That's my, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so in the six of cups here, though, the, the big thing that I see is, is that cups coins, or pentacles? That's oh, sorry, pentacles. pentacles, pentacles, yeah, coins, not cups. The other c word. Uh, so, the three coins are essentially a weight, though. So, as much as money is something that's energy and time, it's also uh, a weight and a burden sometimes. It can be, yeah. So it's not just as simple as I have. And even the lack of it can be a burden and a weight, sure. right? Like so, and isn't that like the balance between the empty hand and the, the hand that's holding? Indeed, or the one that has two versus three in this case. Right, or two versus none or whatever, yeah. right? And, and that was another thing that, uh, that went back to the interpretation of the scales um, in the traditional rider weight deck is, you know, who, um, the flip side of generosity is wanting to look generous more than being mm. generous, right? Um, so it may indicate charity as power over others. Um, so uh, depending on the cards that show up around uh, this particular card, uh, you might be encouraged uh, to examine other people's motives or even examine your own. Um, and it can also mean um, borrowing money to up, as upstart cap capital, you know, borrowing money to get uh, a venture um, started. Yes. Okay, cool. And then on to the Trump. The Trump card. The Trump. Sorry. The <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, before. Check it oh, out. Check in. She's showing her yes. card, which looks to be like someone giving a basket of fruit. Yeah. yeah. The tarot that she has, right? Yeah. What is it called? The witch's tarot? Is that the witch's tarot? No, this is the um, tarot of the oh, hidden realms. Yes, that's right. So when you guys were talking about like bountiful things, uh, I just kind of looked at this and it, it kind of seemed like they're tag teaming it. Like one, one girl is working hard and the other one is like, you know, holding up the the basket um it's like a, a team effort yeah. you know there we go we got we got we got facebook inception happening over on this side of the room <laughs> it could be it could be interpreted as a team effort but it could also be interpreted as i i am giving you you know my wealth yeah. you know she doesn't have any and and she has the tree so she's giving her the apples. Yeah, and it can be, um, you know, interpreted as the balanced um, exchange of, of wealth, right? And balanced exchange of charity because the, um, the, the uh, another thing uh, with the, uh, with the rider weight card is uh, indicating a, um, you know, the, the people are, I got it, um, indicating that the people are bowing um, before the person giving them alms. So it indicates that they are, um, like, thankful. You know what I mean? Like, they are grateful to this person for, for helping them out. You yeah. know, so it can indicate, like, a balanced exchange of, of wealth. Which card are you on now, Uh We are um, moving on to the Lovers, which is the, um, well, that's an Oracle deck. <laughs> that's a totally, that's, what, my no, 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 no. Dan Tapper is uh, exploring an Oracle deck right now. No disrespect. Quite the same as my first deck. Time. Well, if you want, here, if you need a deck to borrow, I here. What oracle deck do you have? Which one is it? The psychic tarot. Did you hear that? The psychic tarot? It looks really cool. But... Psychic tarot by who? John Holland. Oh, okay. This is what's going on on the other Which side. One? Names. The novels is a six, number six, right? Yes. Okay, we're done with Dan Tapper. <laughs> you might be, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, everybody loves Dan Tapper. 
Cool. So our uh, our last card of the evening. Encourage folks. At the beginning of the night, or else, like I think our first our first familiar meeting was like an hour and forty minutes. And I mean, I love you guys, but I don't know if anybody else loves you that much. So. Yeah, ask the people, ask the zero people tuned in right now and see what they say. Okay, so, uh, all right, so the last uh, the last card we're going to be looking at is the lovers. And, of course, this is the Santa Morte one. I just, the deck is just gorgeous. Um, so, in this deck, excuse me. Oh, this is interesting. So, we've got um, the female and male, and... They're both sharing a heart, and <laughs> uh, Christy Lee McKenzie's video just went crazy. Yeah, that's what we're for, keeping it crazy. Um, so this was the is the female and the male, and they're both holding a heart and looking up to the key to unlock it in the sky. So the female is looking at the heart, indicating like um, a concern with emotion. And the male is looking up at the key in the sky, indicating um, focus on unlocking it. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and I'll share that along. And what's interesting about it, and you guys have the rider wet, the rider weight down there. Yeah, the so yeah, this one is a uh, female and male uh, stripped down, naked to the world, and naked before each other. Um, and they are the the male is looking towards the female. It, you know, indicating um, generally the male indicates a um, the the logical brain, um, and the female represents the emotion, and she's looking up at the angel. So I actually discussed this in the write up. Uh, the lovers is more nuanced than just the picture of the perfect Adam and Eve marriage. We are all individuals, whether in a committed monogamous relationship or not. Generally, it indicates a choice between sacred and profane love or a turning point in a relationship for better or worse. The lovers represents a higher level of love and acceptance, but it's also something the individual has to choose. So I edited this part out, but it was like, you know, no disrespect for, to people who want to, like, you know, get Liddy at the club every weekend and see if they can kind of make a relationship out of their drunken one-night stand. Um... But chances are that's not going to happen. Um, so the lovers indicate the choice between, you know, that kind of, you know, uh, smash and, and, and dip. <laughs> and, you know, the actual conscious, uh, the conscious uh, decision that it, it takes to actually look for the person that you really want to stay with. So uh, the, indicate, uh, the, the, the lovers tend to indicate a choice like that uh, between like you know like you can't really do both like you know it's it's one or the other kids and you gotta like decide like whichever you deci decide to do absolutely okay with me in the universe as long as you're true to yourself and true to your partner or several partners um, honesty and openness is the way but you know it's one or the other man um, it could be now. <laughs> well, maybe rotten bananas can make it into a candy. Um, it indicates that it's nearly impossible for us to reach super consciousness through the conscious mind alone. We need to make a commitment to meditation or prayer to get there. Uh, we have to blend the conscious and the unconscious. Uh, depicted in the writer Waite Smith, the man represented the conscious mind and reason looks towards the woman representing the subconscious and emotions who looks towards the angel of spirit and super consciousness. Um, it represents temptation, choice, harmony between the inner and outer life, completeness, equilibrium, and good health. And equilibrium seems to be um, a theme through the sixes as well, um, whether it is a solid equilibrium or a precarious equilibrium, it indicates um, I think, you know, with the wands, it's, um, you know, the best case scenario of equilibrium, you've, the triumph of equilibrium, um, the swords indicates that the equilibrium is soon to come. Um, here, we don't have to focus on me while I'm saying all this crap. You guys can...
in the meantime. Or if you're reading, I don't know. Um, it, uh, it can mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cups, mm -hmm. the cups indicate like a, the equilibrium that you may like maybe nostal not nostalgizing the equilibrium that you have in the past. Um, and the pentacles seem to indicate um, the, the, the achieving of equilibrium through uh, charity. Um, it's uh, balancing the dualities within ourselves, the blending of reason and passion union and the merging of two equals, marriage, practical assistance or emotional support from your partner, determining or establishing what values you have, and what you hold here. Um, it can mean the process of falling in love or the first stage of a romantic relationship, sexuality with your partner. Um, and it indicates a, um, uh, a, a need to Clarify what love means to you specifically. What are you doing? <laughs> Good God. I just say it, it's just easier. Um, Let's just put it on the, uh, on the board. So we a single one, and just rotate, just that camera doesn't. Oh, yeah. No, there you go. Just, Seriously. Just wait till it comes to just Eric. Put them on a stick with tape. Um, so it indicates um, the, the need, need to clarify what love means to you specifically because it means something different to everyone. Uh, what does it look like? What do you want it to look like? Um, it could mean a soulmate bond. Um, and generally, I remember um, I think I went to get my cards read once, and uh, there was a woman who said, that it, it was the past life lover's card. So if, um, or no, that was the six, the six of, um, the six of cups was the soulmate from the past. But this can also, the, I think the lovers can also indicate like a, uh, um, a past life connection with somebody. Um, the mysteries of the male, of male and female relationships from innocence to romance, cart, courtship and marriage. Um, the adaptability and ability to respond to changing in tune with times of love. Uh, oh, ch changing in tune with the times when it comes to love and relationships. Um, domesticity, peaceful happiness, equitability, kindness, a well-balanced well reliability, friendship, and family life. So we'll pass it along and see what other cards other people have. So in this case... For the lovers, we have two lovers framed in a basically a feathery heart. They're not quite yet touching, frozen with that light between them, either the moment just before or just after the kiss. We see Cupid's arrow has gone down between them, separating them, passed through them. But then we also have temptation and the apple of knowledge beneath so there's a lot of uh, definitely biblical references, but it's truth. Both temptation and knowledge can be found, carnal and otherwise, within the lovers. Now, I was looking at some of the different interpretations within this book, and I noticed that it wasn't necessarily just uh, lovers relationship-wise that they're referring to. They also make reference to it could also be a strong partnership or a relationship that's forming. They could not even be romantic in nature, it could be just something that's business or, uh, like I said, uh, I was mean, just going to say, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Oh, wow. And they've got the, um, the tree of knowledge and the snake in it. Oh, yes. Oh, man. He's a cute looking snake, though. On to Eric. It's on you. Yeah. What's up? Oh, oh, we're somehow. Um, Don't put it sideways. Yeah. Oh! Now, now it says I said rotate. We'll just do this. Yes. Yeah. So yes. That, that's what I was yeah. <laughs> so the six in the science deck is called binary stars the lovers oh and nice. it's, yeah so it's a picture of of two stars circling each other and they form together an infinity symbol with a heart at the at the core absolutely and, and that's just can actually be given off by one and actually drawn yeah. in by the other and and what it says yeah, in the book that. actually is really awesome oh you want to see it yeah uh, what it says in the book is really awesome straight up and down it says uh, the lovers have reached the point of balance, and together the two separate stars form one radiant entity. This powerful relationship is represented by an infinity symbol and a fierce heart of fire, signifying a passionate romance, infinite, 
intimate partnerships and the weighty choices they demand. Wow, that's awesome. This is really cool. And again, there's like the, the theme of uh, equilibrium and balance, yeah. right? Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly honest. This is the one card that I'm having issues with right now. <laughs> No, just like it's just triggering me right now. Uh, so in your life, the card is fine. You know, it didn't even trigger me for a long time. <laughs> Anyways, I just have to sit and meditate with this for a bit, I guess, you know, I just, I don't know. I feel like I look at this card and it's saying to me, you have to give up your independence, you know, I don't. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. No. Neither one of those stars are giving up anything of themselves. If they did, it would be it would work. It would be a black hole. Actually. Exactly, but well, that's like his card, but my card. Like card, card like <laughs> they oh, are totally. giving yeah, they... and receiving from one another. Yeah. But they also have parts of themselves that are completely independent. They each have their own core. They have the ability exactly. to self destruct. Yeah. Yes. This, the interesting thing from my perspective actually about the binary stars is when you're far enough away, it's still one dot of light. Like, there's a lot of binary star systems. Wow. We didn't know they were binary until we got modern telescopes. That's deep AF. But when you look closer, they look really cheap. I know, Eric's a philosophy. But philosophy. it's also a dance of fire, too. If you get too close, dance it could be destructive yes. chaos, yeah. or who knows. Is Michael Flatley in the dance of fire? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, it's a girl, and there. See, he's kind of like the green man. Oh, I vaguely see it. It's hard to see on my phone. Maybe I should have done the, the YouTube. The yeah, yeah. Oh, I see him now. Yeah, you got to get right in there. Okay, yeah, I see him. That's what I love about this. Uh, these these images. I love uh, Julia Jeffrey. Um, her artwork. Um, I don't know if any of you have. Um, Hang on, I think they're all distracted. Uh, what? I, I don't know if any of you have, have heard of this, but my, my thought on relationships in general, whether it be love or otherwise, business, uh, just friends, whatever, I find that everybody has to get along on four different rounds. Oh, yeah. The, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And I don't know about you, but that says everything is there. Mm. Everything is in sync. Yeah. yeah. Does it have all four? You know, and card? Just with the look. Does it have? Sorry. It have all the four elements in the card? Uh, I don't think so. But like when. Oh jeez. Oh. Boom! She blew up. Gabrielle, well, thank you for stopping in, Gabrielle. That was really great. And I didn't get a chance to see Christy Lee's comment about the Santa Muerte lovers. You're right. It absolutely does look like um, the same inspired art from the movie Coco. Um, Santa Muerte is uh, a uh, Mexican folk saint um, based on uh, an amalgamation of... Um, the Mother Mary from Christianity and um, an Aztec deity um, that was like the, the mother of, the, well, mother death. And um, uh, there's a, Coco is actually um, based on the day of the dead. And Santa Muerte is kind of like a, a lot of people don't really talk about her much in um, Mexico. Um, it, because she's kind of the deck for murderers, thieves, and drug dealers and misfits, basically. Wow. Yeah, um, she's she yeah, she's the deity because death doesn't discriminate. She's the deity who loves you no matter what, and she, you need, you kind of need her to care about you. <laughs> um, so. Uh, uh, I personally think she's awesome, but that's because I am a misfit. Um, but generally, uh, if you do, you know, um, she's kind of like the, the, the folk saint for people that Christianity is not for. So um, uh, people like um, prostitutes, drug dealers, uh, assassins or gay people none of those people have a place in the church but santa muerte will uh accept with open arms um and uh and so a lot of people have taken their on uh, as their deity so um that's pretty much the entire lesson everybody went through their lovers excuse me we learned a bunch what do you guys what do you guys thought what you know what do you I the, the science card to the devil, and it's yeah. really messed up. I, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's sure. creepy. Well, it's we creepy. will be getting. Well, we will be yeah. getting to that we'll in, a future, it, in a future. In a future. Um. Uh. Me. Uh, um. Facebook or the YouTube. Uh, thanks for showing us your cards. Thanks for tweeting and commenting. Sorry, it took some time here and there. Uh, hopefully, we'll get better at um, the uh, the Facebook comments. But uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, let me get my calendar. I shall get my calendar open, and I will tell you when the next meetup will be. Um, it's around about the new moon in uh, June. The new moon, June. And that is the 13th of June, Wednesday, the 13th of June. So that'll be our next meetup. And that will be on the chariot and the 7th. 
And so hopefully we will see you all then. And till then, have a wonderful, uh, have a wonderful month. Keep reading, keep commenting, sharing, and we shall see you then. Bye. bye, -bye. Are you saying bye? Wait, say bye. To her. Bye, Joseph. I'm actually looking to try to find the Fifty Shades of Love. Fifty Shades of Terror.